State. Well, good evening. On this Wednesday night, we had a wonderful rain today. It was just it was right on time, just right when we needed it. God knows what we need. <clears throat> so as we begin our service tonight, we uh, would, would there be a prayer request on your heart tonight that we need to uh, need to pray about? Of course, we want to remember uh, our pastor as he's in revival and traveling back and forth, and we want to uh, remember him, lift him up. Anyone else? Sheila Walker. Okay. Any others? Yeah, Edison Dunbar and Vanessa Burton uh, both passed away. Uh, remember their families during this time. Yeah, Miss Jamie's here. Yeah. I'm sure Jody could use prayer. Jody Hudson could use a prayer. Yeah. Any others? <coughs> Brother Michael Hunt and Pastor Keith Burton both passed away. And Sister Sherry Hill. You can come up here in the front if you want to, brother. First, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, just glad I'm able to be here. Just thank the Lord for that. I just thank the Lord that he's letting me go and helping me. And I just don't think I can give him enough praise. And, and uh, I just I feel like it's on my heart. I need to do that a lot. So, But, yeah, I had uh, a scan a couple of weeks ago in my brain, which turned out real good. Uh, cancer's still shrinking, and he's took me off the big medicine. I know last week you get a little sick when I took my last one, and uh, everything's looking real good. But if it wasn't for the Lord, I don't, I just don't think it'd be that way. But just have to put our hearts in it and and keep going for the best. Yep. Keep, keep praising Him. Thank you all. That's the God we serve. He answers our prayers. <clears throat> Any others? <clears throat> hmm. Yes. Her uh, her surgery, cataract surgery went well, and uh, you know she uh, she can see now, which is good. So. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, remember Jack didn't see you. Yeah. Any others? Or unspoken request, just a little lift of the hand. Would you stand with us as we pray? Heavenly Father God, we come to you tonight with thanksgiving in our heart. God, you're so good to us and Sometimes we may be amiss about just not giving you all the praise and glory. So tonight, then we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your mercy and your grace and your goodness to us. Father, we've heard the prayer request tonight, those standing in the need of prayer, a healing touch. We've heard the families has lost loved ones. And God, we just pray that you would just comfort them as only you can. But Father, we've also heard praise reports of how you're moving in the lives and working and we, and we thank you for that and Lord when you do that we just give you all praise and glory so tonight during this service Lord we just uh, we just
just pray that you just have your way in this service. We want to just be a vessel that you can use. And Father, we just pray that uh, for everything that's said and done, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. And Father, we'll do whatever man we can do tonight. It's, it's all in your honor. So be with us in our singing and the breaking of the bread, the giving of the word. And Father, we'll always praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing as we sing tonight.
worship with our giving now. Brother Stacy, would you uh, would you bless the offering tonight? have a word of testimony they want to share tonight or another praise report or something uh, amen someone else Amen, yes. <laughs> and still going strong. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Someone else. You got a good heart then, ain't you? 18 <laughs> grandkids. Amen. Yes. You say 24 years? Hmm. That just shows you God wasn't done with us then, wasn't it? Someone else. Still going strong, yes, amen. Anyone else? Yes. Just Kenny, a good friend of ours, as we work many of my walks together and he was a good Christian man so we know where he's at anyone else we serve a good God you know yes anyone else yes amen Amen. 
one stitch with a lot of blood, huh? <laughs> Anyone else? All right, I think we're going to be blessed now with a pleasure song. They never leave. They never will leave. <laughs> Working on this, uh, working on this message for tonight and Monday and Monday night, and I thought it's going pretty good. Well, then Tuesday morning I got up and God began to deal with me, and He led me to another passage of Scripture. So I had to start over. You know the scripture that I'm going to read tonight. You know, throughout Wednesday night, I assume that we're all Christians, we're all saved. So this message tonight may be a little different, but there may be somebody watching online or something that needs to, to hear this message tonight. And we could all use a reminder of just how God, how good he is and how he works in our life and, and the things, the opportunities that he offers us. So I'm going to read a past scripture and I've titled the message now, Look to Jesus. From Isaiah 45, beginning with verse 18. Isaiah 45, 
beginning with verse 18, reading down through verse 23. For thus saith the Lord. So this is the Lord speaking. This is, this is his word. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens. <clears throat> God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in dark places of the earth. I said unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things are right. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and, and pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell ye, and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together, who hath declared this from ancient time, who hath told it from that time. Have not I the Lord, and there is no God else beside me, a just God and Savior, there is none beside me. Look unto me, and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, it shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this scripture. And now as we begin to look at this scripture, we begin to meditate on it. Lord, let this word lodge in our heart. Father, we thank you. We thank you tonight for, for your word that challenges us, that gives us comfort. So have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Isaiah is prophesying in chapter 45. In the beginning of it, he's prophesying that he's going to raise up a king to lead his people from exile. Jerusalem will be rebuilt. The king will be anointed. The king will actually be a Gentile. And this prophecy was about Cyrus. It came to pass, uh, King Cyrus. But it was prophesied 200 years before he was born. But we know that he came true from reading the rest of the Bible. We, we look at the scripture that we read in your hearing. And by, by repetition, Isaiah is saying, Thus saith the Lord. Four times in this chapter alone, he says, Thus saith the Lord. He said, The word is come near. Hear what I have to say. The God who, who formed the earth and created everything in it, including you and I, he said, Come near and hear what I got to say. A message that the world needs to hear today. Look unto me and be saved. Now we know when we fix our eyes on Jesus, when we look at him, there is a drawing power that draws us in there. When we're at the bottom of the barrel, we can only look up and we look to Jesus. Then we confess with our mouth and we establish that personal relationship with him. Look unto me and be saved. The great invitation he said, look unto me and be saved, all ye the ends of the earth. A message for everyone. We're one day closer to the coming of the Lord. Jeremiah 8, 20 says, summer is ended, the harvest is past, and we are not all saved. We know that there's people out there that needs to look to Jesus and be, and be saved. But look to Jesus, call upon his name, look at none other. It shows the, the simplicity of salvation. Look to me and be saved. All we must do is look upon him and call upon his name. You know, one can read many books on theology which can discuss several things. But when we look upon Jesus, that's the simplest basic thing that a person can do. When we've tried everything else and, and nothing seems to satisfy that longing in our heart, then we look, we look to Jesus. And it shows, 
It shows the focus of our salvation. It's Jesus. Look to Jesus. We, mu we must look to him, never to ourselves, never to anybody else. The church membership is not going to save us. The preacher is not going to save us. He can expound on the word, but only Jesus who died upon that cross shed his blood. That blood applied to our life. It shows the love behind salvation. God pleads with man. He, he seems like he's pleading with us. Look to me and be saved. All the ends of the earth. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The love we receive from other people may, may fade or they could turn against us, but God's love will never change. Romans 5, 8, he says, But God commended his love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, that he died for us. The intentions of God's love is, is that we should not perish, but we, we have eternal life. That's what God wants. From us. He wants to spend an eternity with us, to bring glory and honor to him. And it shows us the assurance of salvation. You know, we don't have to wonder whether we're saved. We can have a no-so salvation. We don't have to wonder about it. Hebrews 7, 25, Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost, that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make an intercession for them. It shows, it shows the extent of God's saving love. He's able to save us to the uttermost. It's available to everyone. Look to me. We remember the story of Moses and recorded in Numbers chapter 21. The Israelites, they were, they were being bitten by these poisonous snakes and dying. And, and Moses raised up a serpent, a golden serpent, a bronze serpent up on the And they would look to that. And they would be healed. The, the snakes wouldn't kill them then. Jesus said if he be lifted up, he would draw all men to him. So Isaiah is saying, or God is saying here, look to me and be saved. All you ends of worth. We know we, if many people would do a hundred things just to have this assurance, but all they've got to do is look to Jesus, call upon his name, get that personal relationship with him. God knew we needed a Savior. He knew that we couldn't save ourselves. He, he knew that we needed a Redeemer, a Savior. And he laid the plans back in Genesis, Genesis 3.15. So we see the source of our salvation. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. What joy, what joy did God, when Jesus experienced on that cross? He endured the shame, despising its shame. He endured the cross, he endured the pain. So what joy do you think he saw, experienced Upon that cross, the joy that he experienced on that cross, he knew that that was for you and I. He knew that we needed a Savior, and the joy that he experienced on that cross was knowing over 2,000 years later, we could call upon his name and be saved. That was the joy, knowing that he was doing it, not for himself, he didn't need to be saved, but he was doing it for you and I. That's a joy. Some translations say this beautiful. Fixing. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. We can only do life as we look to Jesus and have our eyes fixed on him. He is our focus. He is our inspiration. He is our example. Jesus is not only the author of a faith, but he is the finisher of it too. Philippians 1 and 5. He who has begun a good work in you will complete it 
until the day of Christ. Jesus is with us at the starting line, and he is with us at the finish line. All along the way, as we do life, he is with us. He endured the cross, like I said, because he knew the good that would, that would come from it. He knew that he was doing it for all of humanity. So through the ordeal of the cross, Jesus, he kept his tongue. He only ordered, uttered seven words from the cross. And he stayed the course. He could have called 10,000 angels and come down off that cross. But he chose to stay the course. He kept his joy. He didn't lose that joy. And he kept his love because he did it for you and I. Through all that pain, agony, and even feeling abandoned, he kept the joy because he loved us and knew the good that was going to come from him. When all of that was finished, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. And he's making intercession for us. I read a story about W.C. Fields. He was an actor, a comedian, but he was a hard-drinking, hard-living man. And he was very sick, and he had to go to the hospital, and he was literally on his deathbed. A friend of his went to visit him, and as the friend walked into the hospital room, he said, W.C. Fields was had a Bible, and he was thumbing through the Bible. And his friend asked him, he said, what are you doing? Are you studying the Bible? He said, no, I'm looking for loopholes. There are no loopholes to this plan of salvation. John 14 and 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but through me. Verse 23 of the reading we said, God said, I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth righteousness, and it shall not return. God couldn't swear by nothing better than himself because he could not lie. And he went on to say that every knee will bow and every tongue confess. Paul quoted this in Philippians, in his letter to the Philippians, Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore God also highly exalted him and gave him a name which is above all names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know, the combination of, of confessing with our tongue and knees bowing, it gives evidence to the complete submission to Jesus, both in word and in action. And that is required of all of us, to confess with our mouth, believe in our heart, look unto Jesus and be saved. There is only one person we can, we can look to and be saved. That's an invitation to every sinner to, to come look at Jesus and be saved. Romans 9, Romans 10, 9 through 10, says that if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in him, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Look unto Jesus and be saved. Acknowledge him before it is too late, because one day every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. I heard an evangelist say here, I'm glad I done my knee bowing and tongue confessing early on. I won't have to worry about it at the judgment day. Look to him while there is still time. 
we think about, as we're reading this, we look to Jesus and be saved. But once we are saved, once we have that personal relationship with him, we still look to Jesus. We look to Jesus. We, we pray to Jesus. We heard evidence tonight of, of prayer requests that have been answered, of praise reports. And we're looking to Jesus for guidance and direction in our life. It's just not, we're saved and and we don't worry about it anymore. We look to Jesus each and every day. We keep our eyes fixed on Jesus as we go through this life. Every day we need him. We need Jesus by our side. We need the Holy Ghost within us to guide us to making decisions. We can't do this on our own. I'm sure many of us can say we tried doing it on our own. For a period of time, for many years in our life, we usually wind up making a mess out of it. That's why we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. We're one of God's creations, and He wants to spend an eternity with us. We were created for His glory, and He does not want to lose. Any of us, because the Bible says each one of us was fearfully and wonderfully made, created for his glory. He doesn't want to lose any of us. And you know what's something even better? He knows all about us. He knows our name. Isaiah 43, the last part of verse 1, he says, I have called thee by name. Thou art mine. Psalms 91 and 4. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he hath known my name. About his children, God says, The Lord searches every heart. And he understands every desire and every thought. That's First Chronicles 28 and 9. He searches every, every part of our heart. He, he understands every desire and thought that we have. Zechariah 2.8, he says that we are the apple of his eye. We think about somebody that we were in. Think about one of our children. Our grandchildren. And we've used that term before. He's, that they're the, the apple of our eye. They're special to us. But we're special to God. And that's why he keeps reminding us to, to keep our eyes fixed on him. You know, if we've got our eyes fixed on Jesus, the worldly things around us, it don't matter. We don't, we don't notice that. We don't worry about that because we've got our eyes fixed on Jesus. We've got our eyes fixed on the prize. And we're closer to the prize than we've ever been before. He sympathizes with our weakness. King David wrote, When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, you knew my path. There is times... When we're doing life that we just feel overwhelmed. That we don't know how we're going to make it through a certain situation. But that's when we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. We keep our eyes fixed on him. All this other stuff will take care of itself. He knows the way I take, Job said. Do you know this God who knows you? He knows your name. And he can't wait to get you home. You know, we look to Jesus. We study his life. We ponder his life. We see how he reacted in situations. We, we consider his ways. We meditate on his words. 
just like a scripture tonight. We, we meditate. We meditate on his word. We place ourselves in the scripture to see how it applies to our lives. Because we know beyond a shadow of doubt that, that one day every knee is going to Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord. And we look to Jesus. And by keeping our eyes fixed on him, we look around at the world today, at all the things going on. The... The immorality that's went out of the inner world today. The things that used to be unheard of, it's now commonplace today. And we think the world is falling apart at the seams, and sometimes it does seem that way. But we know the one that's in control of it all. And when we keep our eyes fixed on him, then all this other stuff is second place. Sister Jeannie, would you come back to the music? So we look to Jesus. And by keeping our eyes focused on him, Sometimes our problems in life, and we encounter problems in life, and sometimes they can seem like we don't see any way out. But we've got someone on our side that will see us through. By keeping our eyes focused on him, Look unto me and be saved, for I am God and there is none else. In verse 19 or 20, I guess it was, he's talking about some. He said, they have no knowledge of me. They set up wood of the graven image and they pray unto a God that cannot save. Nothing is impossible with the God that we serve. For with God, nothing is impossible. Keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for just a reminder tonight that no matter what this world or the Satan throws out at us, we keep our eyes fixed on you and all this other stuff will just be it's no problem for you it's no problem for you Satan. and you've got our best interest at heart so we keep our eyes 